renewed understanding of the work of the Holy Spirit amongst Christians of all denominations. We need to release him. We have to let him out. Just begin to offer him sounds. Just offer him sounds, like a little child learning to talk. And don't pay any attention to how you feel or how you sound. Just do it. Standing outside of a church in Houston, Texas one night, and our guys had, somebody loaned them a Corvette. Boy, and they was excited. We was going to Denny's to eat. And one of our little, one of our girls, Joyce Hunter, walked over to the car, and she said, well, where are we going? And they said, well, we're going to Denny's. Well, she was standing by the car. They pulled off, and they pulled over her foot. And when they did, she just literally crumbled to the ground. Well, the boys, I didn't even know what had happened, and a couple of the guys that were standing there with us reached over and picked her up and carried her over to my car and set her down. She was screaming. And when I went over to her, I, I didn't know exactly what happened. They said uh, the car ran over her foot. Well, I just picked up her foot and put it in my hand. I said, Uncle Shadlamakasa, in the name of Jesus, you be made whole by the power of God. So I feel that same glory right now. I'm not ashamed of the Holy Ghost, folks. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not ashamed of the Holy Ghost. They begin to speak with other tongues. And, darling, don't you think that's not unusual? That is an unusual response. I, when it happened to me, oh, mercy, I was in a church. Everybody was talking in tongues. They had fluent tongues. Oh, they were and all I had inside of me was one little word floating around. Pookie-poo. Pookie-poo. And I thought, God, if I say pookie-poo, I'll be destroyed. It'll be the end of my life if I end this. Everybody say, come on, man. Turn it loose. Come on. You can do it. And I'm thinking, pookie-poo. I can't say that. And finally, I just said, a oh, pookie-poo. I said, he's got it. He's got it. And I mean, the whole crowd went wild. All I said, but it was very unusual response. And with that unusual response, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I was not, it wasn't in the Bible anymore. It was walking around the church. It's pookie-poo, pookie-poo, pookie-poo. I was just going like a house on fire. Now, let me ask you another question. How many speak with other tongues here? Raise your hand. All right. Go ahead and speak. can speak in other tongues then you can laugh because that laughter comes out of your belly also now take your right hand and place it on your belly and just let that joy begin to bubble out of your belly the same way you let tongues bubble out of your belly just go and cut loose and let that joy begin to bubble right out of your belly what other people think no uh-huh doesn't matter what they think Deliver people all right, well, away from their position. I want all the, the Christians to stand up. Yeah. 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 
Uh, what we do, what we do, Ann and Ross, is, is this: that at our church, a lot when we have a, when there's a deliverance, a classic deliverance of a demon-possessed person, we like a lot of praying in the spirit, or what we call praying in other tongues. Now, remember, Jesus said the first commandment is to cast out devils in Mark 16. You shall, in my name. Now, the key is I have to know who I am in Christ. I better, I better know I have authority over this thing or I'm going to get my clock clean. Now, I'm going to come against this thing in the name of Jesus. All right. And the blood. All right. Start praying in tongues, everybody. <laughs> We don't have to pray for your will, Lord. And that same Holy Spirit wants to send spiritual light to a darkened world today. But he's waiting for you and me to say, Oh, that spoken word is the key. Speak that thing. Decree that thing. And it shall come to pass. Whatever it is in your life that you're decreeing right now. As we speak a thing together, it intensifies it. It as John says, it supercharges. You've got to say it. You've got to speak it. You've got to s decree it. You decree the thing. You pay your vow. And then he brings it to us. It's in the word. It's all through the book. Now let's turn to the second area that we'll be looking at today. Unholy laughter. They call it holy. You decide. We read in James and asking ourselves what God says. In the book of James, chapter 4, verse 9, God said, Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. In 1 Timothy 4, verse 12, we read, Be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in spirit. 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8. But let us who are of the day be sober. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, we're admonished, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. My friends, this is what God's word has to say. Now let us examine the behavior, the words, and the conduct of some biggest names in Christendom today. You decide whether this is of God or of the devil. I know this might sound a little sacrilegious to some of you, but really, in essence, you could call me a Holy Ghost bartender. That's probably sacrilegious to some. But I want you to know tonight the bar is open. The name of the bar is Joel's Place. J-O-E-L. The drinks on the house. Drunk again. Ha, 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 ha. 